The stock market had a bad week. Not even the plunge protection team could save it this time, though they certainly tried. If you look at the actual data, you will see that this sell-off isn't just this week, it's been going on for months. So while the rally in stocks has been going on, investors have been selling off. Does that sound strange to you? Well, you came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to look at the massive sell-off that is taking place in US equity. I want to touch on China. I want to look at other markets as well. But the important point here is that despite the fact we have seen stocks rising, there's a lot of investors that are selling off. In fact, there are negative flows into these markets. How could that possibly be? Well, I'll show you. First, we're going to look at the markets. On the right-hand side, you are seeing the sea of red. This example with the S&P 500, I'm showing you the chart. And there's this repeated pattern that I continuously find. This is Friday's trading day. And this is very typical for a Friday, but it happens actually during the week as well. There is a point at which the market hits its bottom. And this here is usually at approximately one o'clock in the afternoon. And then it's as if if somebody flips a switch and the buy signal is set and there is always a charge upward after that it's crazy but the pattern is so consistent I've shown you before on the channel where all throughout this year so far it's been that every Friday has been positive now in this case here it's actually down into the negative but it's only six points barely down and had the market stayed open for a little while longer it would have just moved right over into positive territory so I just wanted to show you that see the repeated patterns and then you start to put the picture together okay this here just shows us how manipulated this is was it the plunge protection team was it the computer algorithms look I don't know exactly there's no way for me to determine that but I can tell you right now this is fishy okay so interconnected with this there's an article out of CNBC so apparently there are growing concerns about the global economy possibly slowing down. And whenever I see this, I laugh because you didn't think that it was slowing down last week. What about the week before? What about this entire year so far? No, none of that existed. But this week here, now we think that the global economy is possibly slowing down. Well, data out of China showed its exports slumped 20.7% from a year earlier, which was obvious below the expectations. That also connects in with what we saw with the ECB. You saw them slashing their growth forecasts and this had come at a time when they were supposedly off of their QE binge. They weren't going to do it anymore. No more money printing. That's it. It's over. We're going to increase interest rates later. We said that it would be like years ago, but no, we're just going to push it off into the future. That's it. So don't worry, but we're going to stop at the QE and then the time comes and then they have to inject more money obviously they are at 4.6 if I remember correctly approximately 4.6 trillion euro there's no possible way that they're going to be able to get out of this mess by printing more money there is a slowdown that's taking place in China what do they do they did the record amount of injection of capital into their markets that they've ever done in such a short period of time and of course, that will not fix the problem. What does the ECB do? Well, Europe is slowing down. You're seeing it in Germany and Italy and Spain and everywhere, basically. What do they do? They print a whole bunch of money. That's right. This is ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. If you didn't see that video I did about the ECB, definitely check it out. It was just yesterday. But what I wanted to show you as part of this is really not covered in the mainstream media. You're not going to see this detail that I'm going to show you in just a moment, but I wanted to cover this one other chart first. These excellent charts, by the way, are from stockcharts.com. I think that you should check the website out if you haven't already. A great place to get this kind of detail. But looking here at the S&P 500, and then above that is the RSI. And I want to touch on both of those. So we had seen the market hit its bottom on December 24th, 2018. And then the market rocketed higher after that point. There's a few significant things here. We have the 2800. And 2800 is very important because 
because this seems to be a very powerful resistance. There's no way that this is going to be able to exceed it without some sort of big news. They're going to need to have something big, whether it's the trade deal, which continuously gets pushed back, by the way, or whether it's some sort of massive quantitative easing from the Federal Reserve. They need something to push back that barrier. This happened uh, three other times, in fact. So we're at a quadruple top. This is going back from October, November, and December. It tried to now back in March, trying again, cannot do so. So again, they need some good news. What I had noted previously was that the markets looked completely oversold and they were oversold here for this moment of time, according to the RSI. You need to be following this as just one indicator. I have a video about the RSI specifically. If you look in my free e-course, you will see that. However, we're just looking at this for a moment, seeing that at this time, I was saying that the markets, although I believe fair value is much, much lower, I said that the markets technically, and meaning regarding the RSI, are oversold. And of course, what happened after that? Well, the markets rocketed higher. They're not showing it here on this particular chart, but it did get right to that borderline of being overbought. Now, I do believe I was looking at some that went over that into the 80s, but regardless, we're just looking at what we're seeing here on the chart. It goes and fluctuates. When it goes to that point of being overbought, these computer algorithms don't act like you do when you're trading. They're not saying, well, I'm just going to hold on to my seven shares of Amazon because this is a really good company and they're looking at Apple and they're saying, well, Warren Buffett bought it and so I should hold on. These algorithms are trading based on the data with no emotion. They don't have emotion like you do. They don't have to worry about anything. They simply trade on the data that they are presented with. So when you see this type of thing, it usually results in a reversion to the mean. And you have to see what happened exactly right now today. It is right smack dab in the middle. So we can see that this has been a pattern over time. Now that leads me into this next point. What's going on with equities today? This is huge news and I don't understand why it's not being covered. Look, I get it. The mainstream media is not going to touch it, but you would think that some of the other alternative news would be touching it. It's definitely not getting out there if they are, but I wanted to show you it. Persistent outflow since October, despite recent rally. How in the world can that possibly be? I just said that there is outflows. Investors are selling, but how is the stock market rising? Well, we're going to touch on that. I did do an entire video, actually multiple videos about this previously. It's still continuing. So this information just shows us right now that the blue line, cumulative U.S. equity flows. This has been going on basically since September all the way into the last date they're showing us there is February. So I don't know exactly what date it finishes on, but that shows us that even while the rally has been going on, the actual flows have been negative. Then you have the S&P 500, which is obviously in the opposite direction. So that just gives us an idea of what has been happening, okay? The group that brings out this data, because this isn't just something that somebody pulled out of their you-know-what. This is the EPFR. I've talked about them on those other videos, but you have to understand that this data is official. This is as good as it gets. So you're not hearing it from me. You're hearing it from the EPFR. When you get that data, you know you're getting the real situation that's happening. And what do they say? Well, let's go further. Worst start to the year for equity flows since 2008. Imagine that. For the first 10 weeks of the year, this is the worst it's been since 2008. Now, we'll see what happens for the rest of the year. I don't know. But at this point, we are seeing some pretty dramatic outflows. And that happens to correlate with the data that I had presented. It brings us back to a level, looks like around $60 billion into the negative. And during the 2008, Eight time frame, it was a hundred billion into the negative. We'll see what's gonna happen. I, I really don't know. However, at this point, while the stock market has been rallying, we're seeing this. It doesn't match up. And let me be very clear. 
the number one, the primary reason right now, specifically right now, not overall, has been stock buybacks. Stock buybacks are responsible for what you are seeing. That's why the money is moving out and yet they are able to push up the stocks higher and higher and higher. I have shown you before, I have documented, check my e-course if you want more on that, where these companies that are buying back their stock tend to perform better than the market, tend to perform better than their peers. Is that a surprise? Of course not. But again, even when I did that video, it had very few views compared to my other ones because people don't want to know. They want to be spoon fed the information. But if you made it this far into the video, I know you're here for the truth. Well, anyway, this just shows us the detail. Now you know why. A short squeeze is also another reason. And then overall, we have the injections by the central bank as being the underlying cause of the bull market in general. But that's really what's been happening. It's it's not just the US, it's happening in Europe as well. Extreme European equity fund outflows. This just shows us, it's a Z score that they have, a Bank of America looking at their chart, which is pulling the data from the EPFR. But all I wanted to show you with this was that it is also on the decline, okay? So that is not surprising because what we have seen in Europe has been terrible, absolutely terrible on every single level. Look, when even Germany is falling, you know there is no salvation for these countries. And what do they do? Well, they got the ECB to print a hell of a lot of money, and that's going to go on until at least 2021, so they say. I'm sure they'll have to bring it up a notch, and they're going to have to actually expand that further and further. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, you're supporting this channel. So I do appreciate that very much. If you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have everything you need. You can get all the data, all the details at the link below. I cover the foundation, the history, the asset classes, making money, so much more. Check it out at the link. If you want the audiobook, that's available at themoneygps.com. If you wanna see that video I did previous to this, talking about what's happening with the stock buybacks, with the short squeeze, take a look at it and you can see for yourself.